time of the day when um, we look towards our doctoral candidate to present to us their general problem statement that they are engaging with, um, as well as multiple um, other areas of their research. And then the floor is open to all of you to pose questions, challenges, or give a little bit of advice. We have lots of supervisors, academics, and industry leaders in the house, so it can certainly give some insights. So um, Judy's tackling a topic that I absolutely love and think is critical, which is does cultural intelligence enhance leadership development in South African healthcare organizations? Um, Judy comes from a voice of absolute experience as a hospital manager at Life Healthcare. She's worked in the private healthcare sector for many, many years, um, holding various leadership positions since the early 90s. And I think her experience in project implementation and change management is really huge because she's a massive advocate for building and maintaining positive working environments for staff and customers and quality patient care. And I'm sure you can all agree that this is certainly an area that absolutely needs influencing. And so um, she, as hospital manager, she's received the Discovery Health Quality Award for the most improved um, hospitals. She's gotten Life Achiever Awards in both 2016, 2017. Um, she's been a finalist in Regional Businesswoman Awards in her sector. But I think, Judy, for me, it is your absolute contribution to society and humane societies that really triggers me about you being an absolute remarkable Davincian. And that is the fact that it takes a lot to give and continually give of yourself in a sector that is marred by a lot of sadness and a lot of things that people are dealing with some of the worst reality altering events of their, their lives. And the fact that you take things like staff wellness um, so that patient care can be better and can be far more caring is something that we really do as Da Vinci admire about you and are extremely proud to have you as one of our doctoral candidates. So I would say to our Mother Teresa or Mother Judy, um, we would like to welcome you here today. Thank you for your contribution to society and to um, give the platform over to you to discuss your doctoral research. Thank you for that very kind introduction. I sound quite posh. Uh, so so the, the, as you heard, my topic is around cultural intelligence um, as it relates to leadership development in, in healthcare. And, and the reason that I became interested in that particular topic is that when I was working in KZN, I realized that um, we've got a small pool of healthcare workers. Um, and, and as you all have realized from, from COVID, um, the importance of healthcare workers can't really be overemphasized, but we need leaders to make healthcare work. So because KZN is a fairly small, um, or the hospital where I was situated had a very small pool of, of skilled healthcare workers, we had to really go about developing talent from within the organization um, to lead at all different levels. And, and one of the problem was once we've done all this development, which um, is quite costly for the organization, we would often then lose the candidates that we developed and we wouldn't gain the benefit of the skills that, that we'd help grow and the competitor would then um, offer them promotion opportunities or, or different benefits. So I became interested in why is that? Why do we lose our candidates? Um, could it possibly be because our working culture, which is based on a Western culture, leadership paradigm, um, be what is off-putting to people who don't necessarily come from that kind of a background? And is there some sort of incongruence between the organizational culture and the culture that people come from um, in their home environments or their communities? So this got me interested in searching and, and having a look um, about leadership, about leadership development, and then also about um, culture. And along the way, I discovered there's there's various people that, that describe culture. You've got Ofsted's um, description of national cultures. You've got Mayer's development, uh, Mayer's eight scale development model of leadership along different continuum. But the one that stood out for me was that, um, particularly coming from background of colonialism and apartheid, um, is ethnocentrism where um, the ethnocentric person will believe that their culture is the only culture that has value um, and as the, that is then therefore superior to other cultures. And, and we definitely see that when you look at um, colonialism and how things operated 
um, with, with the British um, uh, people taking over or working in South Africa, where leaders were trained to work in Africa, but we weren't training leaders in Africa to lead any organizations or any businesses. And, and particularly in healthcare, it is a very multicultural environment, um, and we want our leaders to be relevant to the communities that we serve in healthcare. Um, and we want them once we've trained them to, to remain in the organization. So how do we go about making sure that we achieve this if um, we, we are offending people in terms of culture? So along the way, I also discovered a concept um, which talks more to the soft skills that leaders require. Um, and, and we know about emotional intelligence um, and it's an offshoot of emotional intelligence is something called cultural intelligence. So in terms of investigating how does an individual leader relate to teams that are made up of diverse cultures um, in multicultural organizations? And a lot of this work was done um, talking about uh, Western leaders going to work in places like China or Taiwan, Far East, um, and then also about leaders in, in Europe working in America or America working in Europe. So that was where it started around um, two. 2003, where the concept was developed and tested. Um, and we now have what is a cultural intelligence scale that you can use to measure an individual person's cultural intelligence. Um, and this will tell you whether they're ethnocentric or ethno-relativist -relative, um, in terms of accepting of other cultures. So cultural intelligence is made up of um, four dimensions, um, the meta metacognitive, um, which is what you think about culture, the cognitive, your knowledge about culture, your behavior, how you react in, in different cultural um, settings, and then your motivation, your willingness to adapt your behavior in, in different cultural settings. So we look if we look at those four different um, dimensions, it will give a picture of a person's um, cultural intelligence, whether they have a low cultural intelligence or a high cultural intelligence. And the research shows that people with high cultural intelligence are more ethno-relative and they will then therefore respond in situations where the, the culture is quite different with sensitivity, with understanding, and they won't just leap in with a reaction. They'll first consider um, their, their response, whether it's appropriate, how will it engage um, the team of people that they're working with so that you can then achieve your organizational goals um, and your your um, your uh, your vision for your company, and in the case of healthcare, you're working towards um, in in South Africa, particularly uh, universal healthcare or access of healthcare for for all people. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically what I what I've um, been looking at, and the way that I would then um, go about um, investigating that is through a um, a survey. Um, uh, uh, self-administered on a um, offered on uh, internet or uh, LinkedIn um, connection. Sorry, I've lost my train of thought. And uh, and then basically uh, you would then answer the cultural intelligence scale and the the way to measure the effectiveness of leadership development. I'm um, using Kirkpatrick's model, which has four different levels. I'm going to the last level which is the, the level of the, the reaction or the outcomes or the results of, of the training that you've been through. And you would measure that by whether the person intends to stay with your organization and whether after the leadership development training, they are then promoted. Um, and those two would then uh, talk to the effectiveness of the leadership development program. And the benefit to an organization would be that basically it would help you select candidates who are going to then become stronger leaders or identify gaps in your candidates that you want to develop in terms of their cultural intelligence and how they would work in a healthcare setting that then is multicultural. So I guess that in a in a brief nutshell is is what I've been looking at. Roy's just asking um, what are those four dimensions? Yeah, so it's um, metacognitive, cognitive, um, behavioral, and motivation. Uh, Judy, I'm just curious, you know, as, as you explained to us uh, two questions, you know, what do you think is your biggest challenge in, in getting to your objectives? And then second, uh, what's the, the thing that you suspect 
will surprise you the most if it comes forward? Yeah, so so I think the 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 thing that would surprise me and, and already in some of the research did surprise me is that um, South Africans are, are um, quite familiar with working in situations that are diverse and multicultural. And because of that, um, have adapted very well um, in terms of their cultural intelligence. Hmm. So what surprised me is that um, the African um, colored and Indian people for many years, because of apartheid, were forced to develop um, cultural intelligence. And so there was a study that looked at um, white university students compared to African university students in terms of their cultural intelligence. And, and they found that um, African university students have less trouble adapting in um, multicultural situations than, than white university students, which did surprise me. So I think in terms of the healthcare population, it would be interesting to see whether, because we sensitize to culture in, in terms of our training, whether that, um, that those results would be similar. Uh, what's the, 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 the thing that you anticipate uh, will really, you know, be a game changer? Yeah, so I, I'm anticipating that we'll find that uh, high cultural intelligence will um, be uh, quite correlated very nicely with um, effective leadership development. Um, and that would then give insight into the people that you select for leadership development programs in terms of your healthcare organization. But it also talk to the content of your um, uh, leadership development program in that it could be a component that you do need to include in your program so that you can um, develop because the, the research does show that cultural intelligence is something that can be developed and grown. So, so therefore, you have an opportunity to make sure at the end of your program, you've enhanced the leadership skills as well as the cultural intelligence skills of the, the people that are attending the course. Um, and together with that, then at the same time, build a, a, an organizational culture that will um, enhance retention of employees, that will then create that kind of environment where employees want to stay and develop. So it become a positive environment for growth. Um, and at the same time, build the careers of the individuals in your organization, further um, uh, attracting them to remain with your organization. Um, Gibson um, has got a question for you, as does Dr. Lloyd. So, Gibson, if you'd like to go first, and then Dr. Lloyd. Thanks, uh, Prof. I just have one question. The, um, you, you mentioned the four levels. The last one, which is motivation. Motivation as a concept need to be clearly delineated. Are you referring to employee motivation or organizational motivation? Because that can be a broad subject on its own. Yeah, so in terms of the cultural intelligence scale, the motivation um, dimension speaks to a person's willingness to adjust and adapt their behavior. So, so if you're not interested, you may know that you could moderate your behavior or adjust your language or um, change your response in a certain situation. Um, but if you couldn't be bothered, then you won't. You'll just respond the way that you always would. Whereas a, a, a culturally intelligent person would uh, take that into account and want to, to change the behavior in order to achieve the organizational goals. So in this particular context, it, the motivation is talking about somebody's willingness to learn and to make those adjustments. Culture, especially in South Africa, a country that is actually in a, in a space of change. Culture might happen at, at four levels that I've identified. At a national level, at an organizational level, at a group level, and also at the individual level. Drawing a golden thread through the whole three, which ones are going to cut out to make sure that the, the other one is clearly cut out in your study? The, you might consider in your literature review, in your literature search, to consider cross-cultural social intelligence. Uh, as, uh, one, uh, some scholars have written about it. It's something you might come across when you do a literature review. Cross-cultural social intelligence. Thank you. Really great insights as always, Gibson. Thank you very much. Dr. Lloyd? Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask a question about indigenous knowledge or indigenous knowledges. 
And I was wondering, maybe also in your literature review, or maybe you've already come across this, but um, when our universities now are talking about decolonizing the curriculum, one of the very big issues they talk about is the inclusion of indigenous, indigenous knowledge or knowledges in the curriculum. And particularly, I presume and assume in the healthcare environment, the indigenous knowledge, um, different ways of looking at wellness, healing, medicine, uh, mental approaches, all of those things would be slightly different to our very westernized way of looking at healing and wellness. Do you think that the fact that some people or numbers of graduates might leave or employees might leave is that they find the westernized working environment in healthcare insufficiently sensitive to all the other types of healthcare that come through their cultural um, intelligence, what they know works, and also their own exposure at a time possibly where they were not exposed to the high level technology that some people have. And all of this frames their frame of reference as they enter a profession in the healthcare industry. So it's really looking at how do we decolonize the curriculum to include all those things that come out of their own cultural intelligence um, coupled to what they actually know has worked in their own environment. So uh, my, my issue is, would you include that in your literature review or have you come across those sorts of things? Do you think it would be helpful to have a look at how decolonizing the curriculum um, would assist you to grow your study further? Thank you. Yeah, so, so in terms of my study, um, I'm more looking at the development of leaders in healthcare. Um, and because of that, I did look and I have been looking at um, indigenous leadership models um, as alternatives to a more Western leadership model. So, yes, uh, I very definitely it, it's, it's a very valuable uh, point and, and something that I, I am going to include in the, in the study. Thanks, as always, for your insights, Dr. Lloyd. Um, Janet? Judy, I come out of a um, medical background, um, used to work as, uh, well, I was, I come out of a nursing background, and I'm curious about a couple of things. The first is, uh, what I heard you say, and I might have missed something, was you're going to essentially assess people in terms of cultural intelligence, and then maybe there's some different things you can do after that. So, you know, what happens when they go into leader development? What my, How might that impact on your leader development programs? Um, and I'm just thinking from a research perspective, I, I'm, I'm just curious about where this goes. Um, so that's kind of my first question. Because um, in some ways it almost, and I, and I don't want to sound critical, but it almost sounds like a no-brainer. Like you know that the better leaders are going to be those who have cultural intelligence. So what? And and I, as I said, I don't want to sound critical. I'm just asking the question. And then I think from a praxis perspective, ultimately, how does this improve quality of care? Um, and I'm certainly very curious about the culture within the healthcare environment, which I think can sometimes be very counterproductive. And, and then maybe just one little experience that I remember having that you know, might trigger something. Um, when I first went into private uh, working in a labor ward, um, and this was back in the 80s, I was a white little nurse who'd come out of a white little hospital uh, where we had all the resources and we did everything by the book. And I was suddenly working with some black nurses who had come out of a very, very different training environment. And some of my colleagues, my white colleagues, were getting really frustrated because of the difference in quality of care. And there was a very simple explanation. In our white little hospital with all of our resources, we could do everything by the book. We had everything we needed. They didn't. They were coming out of a situation where we, you know, for every three deliveries we did, they were doing 40 deliveries. 
they did not have the time to pay attention to all the fine little details that we thought were so important. Um, and, and that was just, yeah, that was a personal experience I've spoken about so many times uh, in the 30 years since it happened because it was a stark example of how we become the kind of practitioners we become. Um, I'd just like to dovetail onto Janet's with um, somebody's asked about that your findings may need sensitivity in reporting. So do you foresee potential difficulty in this? And connected to Janet's first question is my question in terms of as a doctoral student and candidate, the requirement is obviously to provide new knowledge. And I think Janet's, um, you know, so what question can be linked to what will your contribution be um, to the field and what new knowledge will you hope to produce out of this? And I think that will then answer Janet's first question. Yeah, so so those are the questions that I asked myself, um, particularly at the beginning, um, starting this journey. So so the 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 question that I that I set out to to investigate or to look at was that if if our organizational culture um, and the leadership development that we offer is based on a on a more Western um, sort of leadership paradigm and doesn't include, as one of the other speakers said, the indigenous knowledge. Is it then relevant? Because it makes it more difficult for people to then um, study or learn these kinds of concepts that are, are very foreign to, to where they're coming from. So that's the first thing. The second thing was um, in terms of cultural intelligence, um, it, it, because you can get very caught up in culture, um, as, as we heard, um, na national, organizational, group, um, and then your individual. I, I distilled it down to the individual um, cultural intelligence because we can manage our own cultural intelligence, regardless of the national, organizational, and other settings. So, so we can develop and grow our cultural intelligence because we know the kinds of, of um, environments that we're, that we're working in. And then there are various tools that we can use to, to enhance our abilities, but also that help create that knowledge and that metacognition that we need as, as components of cultural intelligence. So, so the question is, so what? So, so in, in healthcare, um, there is a dire shortage of skilled staff. Um, and in order to transition towards um, a national health insurance or universal health care, we need leaders. Um, and we need leaders that are going to stay in, in health care to, to achieve those goals and, and together with that, the sustainable development goals. And we need leaders at all levels of, of health care, not only at the senior leadership levels. And basic training for health care professionals teaches you to be a good solo practitioner. Um, with clinical skills. It doesn't necessarily give you leadership skills um, that you can then translate into um, how you go about managing your job um, and achieving all of those things about scarce resources because there is internationally a, a scarcity of skilled um, healthcare workers and that scarcity is going to get more because we are all struggling with the stresses um, as a result of having gone through all these various COVID waves. So, so the so what is that we can then have um, a skills base and a leadership pipeline of people that can be flexible, that are good leaders because of their cultural intelligence. And what we discover in the, in the research, in the survey, is what is it that we can do to select the, the right people? What can we add to our leadership development programs that will enhance those skills so that we do have those kinds of leaders that are motivated um, and will display the behavior that they can then lead in what is quite a difficult sector that is full of complexity and has a lot of challenges. So that's um, sort of basically where I'm at at the moment and uh, I really appreciate the input that you were given. Um, Judy, I really appreciate your insights. It is a daunting task being a doctoral student to do this. And so I congratulate you um, on taking this and on your study going forward and all the steps that are left. To all those that have commented, much appreciated. Roy, if I can ask you to please use the last few minutes to close for us. Um, Judy, I do see your caricature on my screen, so I'll ask Roy to fully share it. Um, and then I will close off the session this evening. Roy, over to you. 
Uh, sometimes my cultural intelligence fails me when it comes to drawing people. I just had to do a visual pun, which was to put um, a colonial powerhouse on screen um, and to talk about decolonizing. It did sound like that's one of the key things in your in your research. My culture is the only important culture, is the poor end of the ethnocentricity intelligence scale. On the one end, we have the ethnocentric, and on the other, we have the ethno-relative. I'll put that in green because I think that's what we aspire to, hearing the fact that it can be learned. This concept here, this idea that you can gauge the cultural, sensitive, the cultural intelligence of your training by the question, are you going to stay in this company after training? That's, uh, that's pretty intelligent and pretty unique. I wonder what that will yield. I wonder what your research is going to show about that. That's, that's going to be so interesting to know. And I think you're going to make a contribution to more than just healthcare. I think a lot of South African companies are going to be able to get a lot of stuff out of this. Judy, I apologize if I've misconstrued anything of what you've said. Um, it is obviously interpretive, but uh, I, I, I had fun drawing it, and I hope, I hope the sketch notes are useful to everybody who has been on this call. Thank you so much, everyone. Roy, thank you so much for joining us. To everybody else, thank you for engaging us. We realize that time is the most precious commodity that we have, and you have given us of your time and of yourselves. So thank you for engaging our speakers, and thank you for contributing to influencing the co-creation of certainly humane, um, sustainable societies. Each of you that have joined, con we know your impact to society. We look forward to seeing you next month um, at the next Curiosita Colloquium. And until then, or we see you in between, take care, be safe, um, and look after yourselves. Dr. Lloyd and um, to Janet, wishing you a fast recovery from your COVID, um, as well you. as anyone else who's struggling with their health or any loved ones that are. We send our very best Vinci wishes to all of you. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Mm -hmm.